Welcome back to another project from Lizard Landscapes. Got a winter waterfall diorama. So with this one, uh, did a few different things. Incorporated an LED system. So two systems, one that looks like Christmas lights and another that looks like uh, a fireplace. So I've got this uh, false wall that uh, removes and camouflages the LED system, the little three-way switcher but also incorporated uh, the ability for those people that don't want to mess with the LED system to just put a LED tea light in there. So that's how it looks with the LED tea light. Actually it looks a little bit more natural, but more subtle. And that's how I'm camouflaging the LEDs plus the tea light. So this is a long one. Get a cup of coffee, get a cup of hot cocoa and sit back and relax and watch me create this winter waterfall. All right, you wanna make sure that you are near an open window because I'm gonna be using some hot wires from the hot wire foam factory. So usually I start off with a sketch. So this is the sketch that I uh, drew out. This is based on an actual waterfall that I visited over the fall this year in Hocking Hills, Ohio. So it is the main waterfall in Old Man's Cave. So I based the scale on this particular project on the width of the main falls at the top, which is two inches. So I determined the scale of everything else based on that width of two inches of the main falls. So cutting out some pieces here, I'm going to hold them all together with some small pins. So this is just so that you don't have to start gluing. You can change your mind by removing the pins. But holding it together with pins, I'm going to try to figure out that back portion that's beyond the bridge. So drawing out a little basic design of what's going to happen on top with that section that is uh, beyond the bridge. So taking the hot wire and creating some texture, creating some areas where the rock uh, has got some cracks and cutting out uh, that upper part of the stream, realizing I need to build up that landscape to have those smaller falls be able to fall down into another uh, section of water. and gluing on that uh, front part. So removing the pins and then applying a certain type of glue meant for foam. I'll have a list of materials in the description. Uh, experimenting with some texture with a knife. Uh, with this XPS foam, uh, it's easy to apply texture. Uh, creating that piece that extends that uh, will eventually have the cabin sitting on it. And these pieces are essentially the water feature of the main pond. So I'm going to glue these together, glue them onto the project. That's how it's looking so far. And I'm going to cut into this with uh, the hot wire and try to carve out that pond area. So I've got a flexible hot wire there, uh, putting in some texture for the rock face. So I've applied some texture with uh, different techniques, uh, various pieces. Here's a way um, you can start to think of this idea of fleshing out kind of a two-dimensional drawing or idea. I've got just this basic rectangle. Uh, I'm going to draw out what I think the shape should look like and cut away that that excess 
and glue it onto that area and then basically after that start applying texture and start uh, refining it from that point to look a little bit more like what the reference uh, photos are looking like. So I'm looking at a lot of reference photos of that waterfall in Hocking Hills and uh, drawing out the bridge. So applying some more glue and uh, fixing on this side piece, realizing I need some wedge pieces to uh, connect the side piece to the main area. So these particular pieces, these wedge pieces are, I'm trying to uh, look at the reference photos. The, the rock formations at this site uh, are very distinctive uh, in how they look and how they've got this, uh, uh, this pattern about them. So I've got this placeholder for, uh, to represent where the water is going to be, where the resin is going to be. So I don't want to start sculpting down into where the water is going to be. So I've got that to basically stop me. So I've got an another piece here that uh, I'm going to draw out and cut away. Another uh, wedge piece connecting that side piece to the main uh, area. And cutting into the uh, upper falls area, those little ponds, those will hold some resin and the water will fall into those little areas. So I've got different tools here. I inherited a sewing kit. I mean, of course, I use all of those tools for model building. Uh, so I have no idea what this is actually meant for. This uh, is a soft wire brush. So this is really good for creating texture creating a, a lot of uh, good rock texture in that rock face and gluing on some rocks for the pond so these will all be they'll all be underwater some of them will be half in water and out of water and I've got these rocks that I'm going to glue after I've poured the resin so these will be glued after I've poured the resin, sort of sticking out of the water and putting in some smaller rocks into that uh, riverbed, cutting away a walkway for that bridge. So removing that uh, center section. And then I'm going to try to uh, create some texture in the bridge, make it look like it's been there for a hundred years, um, using all of these techniques to apply uh, different textures. So using the knife and uh, creating all kinds of uh, detail. So we've got this little uh, prototype for the cabin, just trying to figure out the scale of uh, what the cabin is gonna be. So cutting out some timber it's basically creating some really small uh, cylindrical pieces that using my fingernail uh, to create some texture as if it is uh, if, as if these are logs. Also use that fingernail for guitar playing. It's like a built-in guitar pick. Uh, even created some little wedges for uh, the cabin logs. So quite a bit of styrofoam timber there. So I've got the base of this cabin and I'm just going to start building up these little styrofoam logs. Start uh, gluing these together. And then once those are glued together, I'm going to take uh, an X-Acto knife and cut out some windows and a door. And I've got the basic shape of a chimney here. I'm going to paint that a really dark gray and apply some glue and then some very small pebbles. I glue those on there. Then applied a whole bunch of glue to the inside of the cabin so that that'll strengthen it. That'll also help 
keep the light from the LEDs in the cabin. Put in a little door and gluing on a roof. And put in a little piece to connect the uh, bottom, I guess, log area to the top of the roof. And uh, I'm going to have to cut out the bottom section of the landscape uh, to put those uh, LEDs and tea light uh, in there to shine up through the bottom of the cabin. So cut that out. And uh, I ended up putting the chimney on the other side of the cabin, but originally it was supposed to be on this side. So those uh, cuts to remove that little section of the roof, I ended up repairing that and putting a window there. So putting a little support beam on the uh, front porch. And uh, wound up putting a window where the chimney was originally going to be just to let more of that light from the LED system shine through there. So kind of working out of order with this entire project as I usually do, gluing in uh, a sort of side piece to that rock face and then spray painting white some uh, basic sea foam. So this is really all I did for the trees is spray painted white uh, and went back in a little bit later and tried to reestablish the color of the trunk of the tree. So I've got this covering for the LED system and the uh, tea light. So this will just holding it together at first with pins. So this will cover, this will hold uh, that LED system. So I'm going to, of course, apply uh, some uh, rock face to help it uh, blend in with the rest of the uh, structure. And I've got a shelf here that is going to, this will hold the LED uh, battery and a three-way switcher, just sort of back and out of sight. And so I've got two systems, each with three lights. One is representing a fireplace and the other uh, Christmas lights. So like I say, I've got this uh, covering that I made to camouflage that system. And gluing on a base to uh, where the main resin will sit, just as a way of uh, supporting that. So wasn't really pleased with this sidewall so created another one and uh, glued that into place with a little bit more character. So I've got all these pieces that are finished as far as the sculpt and I need to uh, apply, I'm applying a sort of thinned out white glue and just holds everything, you know, glues everything together plus creates a, a layer on the styrofoam before you start painting. So holding it over a uh, little bowl there to catch the sealant. And as a last stage before I start painting, I'm gonna apply a little bit of sealant and then a little bit of uh, fine grain sand to some areas. This will help in bringing out some texture when I start the dry brush uh, technique. So mixing together a uh, whole bunch of black acrylic paint with water so I'm going to cover the entire project with black and uh, it might look a little bit weird at first, but it's always good to start with a base of black. It helps fill in all those cracks. Uh, did the same thing with the uh, cabin. And mixing together uh, some earthy tones, got some brown and beige and gray and going to remove quite a bit of the paint on a paper towel and start this uh, dry brush technique where you are letting the texture of the rock, of all that texture that you applied in the sculpt, uh, pull off a little bit of paint. And so this process really takes a lot of uh, layers of different, different shades, different tones and values of, uh, of color 
So, and it shows you how fast you can really go here with a bigger brush with this uh, side panel here. So also painting the cabin, just starting off with a dark brown and still letting some of that black show through and then progressively using lighter browns just to sort of bring out uh, the texture. You can really see that, see it there on that roof, even though I completely covered that roof up uh, with snow. So here is how that is looking. Trying to basically create a really old weathered look to the cabin. So and then even applying some color. You always see this in 2D paintings where they'll add like red to a cabin. So I've added a little bit of faded burnt orange uh, here and there. You can see it there on one of the floorboards and uh, gluing on the chimney. That is a legit stone chimney there. So yeah, you could 3D print your own cabin. What, what fun is that? So continuing to dry brush uh, this rock face. So adding a whole bunch of different colors here. So sometimes adding a, a layer of color where you're just barely adding any of it just to uh, get more of a complex look. And then adding some color, again, that sort of faded, burnt, earthy, orange, clay color. Looking at the uh, reference photos to this waterfall in Hocking Hills, Ohio, there's quite a bit of discoloration in the bridge. Um, so trying to incorporate that. So uh, edging out that little top section of the bridge and uh, trying to reestablish a little bit of the look of the, the bark. So adding just a little bit of dark brown here and there just on one side of those trees. And going ahead and painting uh, the riverbed. So up top using a faded uh, dark blue. And then down on the main pond using more of like a genuine aqua color. So completely covering that and then starting this dry brush technique of applying a lighter color towards the top and then a much darker uh, faded aqua towards the bottom. So you're trying to create this uh, grayscale, this blend, if you will, from really dark at the bottom, suggesting more depth uh, to the water. And then dry brushing on top, sort of a blend of a sandstone and aqua color. Then taking, uh, using more of a true aqua in the middle, and then kind of using all of those colors to dry brush in between all of those and help them uh, help uh, create this fade. So applying a little bit of glue to uh, this piece of plastic, type of plastic you could get at an office supply store. So I'm going to apply this to a uh, piece of cardboard. And this will be one of the barriers that will hold the resin in. So you want resin uh, curing up against something smooth like that instead of the actual cardboard. So I'm going to go ahead and glue in this base section and just literally glue it to the actual project. So I've got another uh, piece that I've done the same thing, applying that plastic and uh, glue it uh, onto the side and then another one onto the front. And I've got this little side piece that is a little bit different, had to cut it out 
in such a way that it would fit up against uh, that rock face there and then gluing it into place. So be sure and watch this intermission. All right, time for another intermission. This is where I go completely off topic and try to motivate those who haven't found God yet to start searching. Since this video is being released around Christmas, I thought I would talk about the true meaning of Christmas. The true meaning of Christmas is God coming to the earth in the form of Jesus Christ to save mankind from their sins. Well, that was quick. Merry Christmas, everyone. But seriously, we are celebrating God's gift, the first gift to mankind by Jesus being born into the world so that he would be the atonement for all of our wrongdoings or sins, without which we would be separated from God for eternity. Now, a lot of people, when they hear the meaning of Christmas in maybe a much more elaborate way than what I just said, might have a reaction like, well, that's nice, but so what? As if to say they don't understand how it directly affects them. I think it only becomes real when it becomes personal. People might not care unless they know they've got a dog in the fight. That dog is where you will spend eternity. Jesus is asking you to accept him or believe in him, believe that he died for your wrongdoings or sins, repent of what you have done and ask for forgiveness, and allow him to change you so that you are born again with a new heart and new desires. Sounds like a lot, but he's the one doing all the work. You just give him permission to do it by making decisions about who he is and what he has done and asking him to change you. As I've said in previous messages, but I think it bears repeating, generally we think, I haven't done anything too bad. It's not like I've committed murder or something worthy of being separated from God. And yet think of the simple act of telling a lie, which we've all done. Many of the world's judicial systems are entirely based on witnesses telling the truth. That's in a court of law, when one is under oath, when it counts or matters. If a witness is found to have lied, they have to do what's called paying a debt to society, which is either a fine or time in prison. These are rules under human laws. How much more stringent would it be under God's laws? God with his word is basically saying it counts all the time, not just when you're under oath in court. He's saying you can't just do the right thing only when people are watching. So all those times we've lied or did something nobody knew about, God knew about it, and is saying in his word that it needs to be atoned for, as if we were in a court of law, under oath, our entire lives. Now Jesus doesn't expect us to be perfect, but he does expect us to ask him to change our heart and attitude towards sin and essentially be born again with a new heart and new desires. Remember that dog in the fight you have. It's your eternity and where you will spend it. Start off by thinking of this in a completely and utterly selfish manner. Don't you at least owe it to yourself to research where you may or may not end up upon leaving this world? Please take the time to research this. There are so many testimonies online of heaven and hell. Thanks for listening. So, created these window frames for the windows in the cabin, then put, glued on some plastic uh, on the under, underside of the cabin, make it look like you've got windows here. And so, trying to apply a, uh, several layers, actually, of a sealant to where I'm going to pour that resin. So you want to make sure that this is all sealed up. You don't want any leaks. That resin uh, can be quite expensive. Also sealing up the uh, top part. So I'm going to put this on a little cookie sheet with a little paper towel just to test for leaks. So I've let this sit for about 72 hours. I'm going to pour in some water. And then try to pour it up to where I think the water line is going to be. And this had quite the bad leak. So I had to go back and apply several more layers of sealant. 
and really try to get it into all of those little cracks. So I let that sit for 72 hours and then did another test and there were no leaks. So a good way of measuring out how much resin you're going to need is to pour that water then back into a wide mouth container and then pour that into a measuring device. And then I would go back and forth, you know, pour it back in, remeasure, just make sure that you're going to be uh, pouring out the right amount of resin just so you don't waste any. So on to uh, the resin stage. I've got one part, one bottle to two parts of another bottle. And I'm going to mix that together. I'm going to go ahead and mix this for about 15 minutes. And I'm gonna go ahead and pour this. So I did two pours 24 hours apart. Poured in the uh, top part in one pour, because it was really shallow. So 24 hours later, pouring in another layer onto that uh, main uh, lower pond area. So this is how I created the ice. I've got a cookie sheet uh, pouring on some leftover resin onto a little piece of wax paper and then adding a little bit of uh, white enamel paint. So pouring it with this particular test piece on one side and letting it sort of blend out into a uh, uh, sort of clear area of the ice. Here adding like way too much enamel paint just to see what that would look like. Also did a test piece with acrylic white paint. So creating the texture for the waterfalls here. So had two main uh, big pieces and then created this kind of strip for that, those upper falls area to create texture. So installing the LED lights So the way in which I uh, got the little battery there in that little shelf I created, the way in which I um, fixed this to the project is I've got little pins that I just took a pair of pliers to to create this shape and uh, just basically pushing that pin into the styrofoam of the project. I also added just like one little small bead of glue, a little drop of glue to one of those uh, uh, staple like pins. And uh, just because I do want to be able to get this out if need be, maybe change the battery, change the lights out uh, at some point. So dry brushing above uh, the water line for those rocks that are sticking above the resin. So trying to do the same thing to make it look similar to the rocks above with uh, dry brushing uh, many layers onto that. So finally moving on to the stage of dry brushing snow onto this project. So I did a couple of different methods. Used just white acrylic paint to dry brush all over uh, the project, but then added a glass frit or a basically powdered glass uh, to certain areas to kind of flesh out that snow look. And basic rule of thumb is you're wanting to obviously have a thicker snow on sections that are horizontal or flat and then working towards uh, tapering other areas that are more vertical. So you want to be careful not to add too much, um, even applying a little bit to those rocks that are sticking out of the uh, upper um, river area and applying snow to uh, the cabin so really completely covering uh, the roof of the cabin and then doing a little bit of tapering uh, as far as like the logs 
here and there that would uh, have caught a little bit of snow on them. So this is how I uh, did the smoke in the chimney. It's just basically a piece of cotton that I dry brushed a little bit on one side in like a dark gray and then gluing that into place. And then applying a little bit of a sealant, watered down sealant onto the roof and adding that glass frit, that powdered glass. You can also use like a fine grain white sand would also work, but wanting that uh, powdery look uh, for the roof. So I've got a couple of pieces of plastic here to create uh, the waterfalls. So you just used a, a container that I bought, you know, like uh, sunflower seeds and happened to work. I'm sure there's a lot of plastics that would work really well, but you can bend this this type of plastic anyway, and it'll keep its shape. So I've got this piece that I've bent into the shape that I'm wanting for that uh, upper main falls area. So that's how those uh, two pieces are looking. I'm gonna spray water onto uh, the texture of the waterfall. So again, I'll leave a materials list in the uh, description below. Sometimes if you spray water onto these, they'll remove from wax paper easily. Sometimes they won't. Like the ice, uh, for example, did not remove easily. But gluing uh, that texture onto that piece of plastic that's got a little bit of a curve up top. And like I say, working out of order, applying a little bit of sealant to uh, the bridge, adding some of that powdered snow. So did this in many layers, I wanna say four layers uh, of letting it dry and then adding more sealant and then sprinkling more of this powdered glass uh, over top of what I had already painted a white acrylic. So time to remove the uh, barriers to the resin. So I had more difficulty with this than any other project where I've used uh, resin before. And I wound up having to implement like a clamp and then I've got some cotton so I don't crush my fingers up against the, the resin there. Uh, it was quite difficult, but uh, did finally get this to remove and uh, remove the uh, side barriers as well. And then uh, using a razor blade, removing uh, that little lip that happens uh, whenever you pour resin, there's like this little kind of wicks up. So I've got the uh, ice pieces that I'm gonna remove. Like I say, sometimes they will, uh, if you spray them down with water, they've been on wax paper, paper, they will remove this easily. So experimenting with uh, different test pieces of ice, trying to see what looks good. So this is a example of enamel white paint with that same resin. And this is an example of acrylic white paint with the same resin. So each of them looking uh, fairly convincing that they're ice. Uh, going ahead and gluing those side rocks. So the idea is that they're jutting out somehow from that block of resin. And uh, gluing in some uh, texture for the waterfalls in the upper part. and taking some glue and sort of blending that back into uh, the water. And had a little bit of uh, difficulty in removing this barrier for the resin uh, up top. So having to take an X-Acto knife and uh, get that removed, but fairly easy to uh, fix this. So just creating or covering it with like a dark brown and then adding a little bit of light beige and then finally um, covering it, dry brushing it in a white and really uh, makes it blend in. You can hardly tell that there was ever a problem there. 
and applying a uh, high gloss sealant to uh, these upper sections and then just with a brush uh, creating some ripples. Some people use an airbrush. Uh, I can't afford an airbrush. So using a little brush to create ripples there. Applying some glue and then installing uh, that first uh, lower waterfall after having applied the uh, texture. And then doing the same thing to that upper uh, waterfall area. Using some of that same stuff it took to create the texture uh, for the waterfall in uh, trying to blend those pieces back into that water. So I've got the acrylic plus um, resin chunk of ice that I've cut out and then experimenting still to see what looks better. Wound up uh, choosing this piece. So interesting that I've got uh, you know, the uh, acrylic on the, the right and the uh, enamel paint on the left. So cutting that to fit uh, exactly to the, the chunk of ice, the block of ice. Gluing those into place. And with a leftover piece that I did not use um, of ice. I'm cutting out little small pieces to try to create this illusion of broken ice. Maybe the waterfall is just crashed down after a little bit of melting. So we've got this broken ice here. Uh, so gluing some of those little smaller pieces into place. And then you can create a water line with a pin, just with some white paint and then removing quite a bit of that just so that it's a really subtle um, look of having a water line. And dry brushing on some shadow color to the waterfall. So using a muted uh, dark blue with a lot of gray in it. So you want to apply a shadow color uh, just so that uh, when you apply the white foam, as I'm doing here with a little dry brush, uh, it really helps it stand out. So also doing the same to the falls, little small falls up uh, the top of the project. Using a dry brush technique to bring out the uh, texture of the ripples. and applying some of that same high gloss glue to the bottom of the pond and doing the exact same thing and creating uh, that texture for the ripples, having it go right up against uh, those pieces of ice. Going back in with a really small brush, trying to create a little bit more detail on some more straight uh, lines of the water falling and then creating that break point at the top where in each waterfall there'll be this point where it begins to turn into that white foam look. So trying to create a sort of uneven uh, break point, sometimes using a pin uh, to create an even smaller mark and covering all of what I painted white as far as bringing out the texture in that same high gloss glue it took to create the ripples. And this is really just to reestablish that wet look of the water because the, the white acrylic paint will leave behind a really dull, dry look. So going back in, went back and forth on this uh, and with some of that shadow color and trying to create more shadows uh, Going back and forth, as I said, it really creates more uh, volume and depth to the waterfall doing that. And dry brushing the ripples down at the uh, base of the waterfall, having it get lighter as I go outward from the actual falls.
and having it be a, a lot thicker as far as that white color at the base and then taking a small brush and creating more uh, opaque um, foamy things happening in the water creating some more distinctive uh, lines in the ripples and creating some dots here and there this will really flesh out that look of water falling creating some little white dots adds more detail and then gluing on some uh, icicles so this is created the same stuff it took to create the texture to the waterfall you're just creating a really small cone obviously with a sharp tip a sharp point at the end so uh, gluing in uh, quite a few of these making sure that they are small enough to uh, make sense within the the scale of the project and covering um, Again, all of the white acrylic areas, as far as bringing out the texture of the ripples, covering that, covering that with a uh, high gloss sealant. Doing the same thing to the actual falls, trying to uh, bring back that wet look of the water. So applying a little bit of glue to the base and then adding a very thin strip of cotton this will really help with the look of that water splashing and uh, the mist in general at the base of a waterfall. So doing the same thing with the upper falls area. So time to glue in these trees. So I wound up trimming that tree to the point where it was quite a bit shorter than that. And taking a tool and digging into the landscape a little bit, applying a little bit of glue. And then going ahead and installing these trees. So I put quite a few. Like I say, these are just sea foam that I have spray painted white. And there you have it, Winter Waterfall. Incorporated quite a few uh, water effects into this project, including ice, and obviously moving water and uh, the mist of the waterfall hitting the water. So be sure and check out the other uh, projects on the uh, channel. As always, thanks for watching and Merry Christmas.